Hello everybody, I'm Ian Gibson. It's yet another Tuesday, which means it's time for The Sandbox. This is our multiplayer co-op survival adventure crafting series where we play multiplayer adventure co-op survival crafting games. Uh, this is season seven. We're deep into No Man's Sky. We're having fun, Jake? I'm having fun. I've How sunk like 30 hours into this since we started. Oh my god, Jake. Jake, I feel like we need to have like a, a No Man's Sky intervention. This is... I'm, I've, like I said last time, still a No Man's Sky apologist. <laughs> Kyle, uh, anything to apologize for? Um, I'm still playing Star Citizen. Oh, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, Will, No Man's Sky, how you feeling? You know, it's it seems like it's everybody's man's sky now. That's don't be sexist. <laughs> um, <laughs> just assume everyone's gender. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for no man's sky um oh y'all can't see that let me fix that real quick so uh we're not really sure what to do with this stream because basically we've done had a lot of fun in this game but there's two big goals left for us one is to get a living ship um and, and uh jake could you describe that process roughly um so there's a the nexus on the anomaly where you can get a special currency called quicksilver and you need 3200 quicksilver to buy an egg that then will eventually become a living ship and i tried to get some quicksilver this week and they were all like multiplayer missions where i couldn't ever find where the mission was supposed to happen mm -hmm. so i still have zero quicksilver yeah i have 150 and i think i just got them I don't want to say at random because that makes it sound like it was easy, but I just got them for, I think, for turning in a couple quests or something. So long story short, it's not going to happen. Um, the other goal is to get to the center of the galaxy, which, you know what? Let's 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 play a little game called How Far Away Am I? Um, I love this game. How? Wait, I can't check the galaxy map. While oh, you got to be on in the spaceship. station. I'm too far away. Um, <laughs> I think with my current ship, it would take rough estimate about a hundred hours. Um, I think if I fully upgrade my ship and do the proper strat, it would take anywhere between five to ten hours. Way too much time. So this is going to be our final No Man's Sky stream. We're just going to blow it out. Uh, we're going to have some fun. So I, I figured <laughs> one of the things I want to do today is just uh, cheat the game and get a lot of money. So this is the strategy I saw. I am on the space station, and I'm about to buy out all of their cobalt for 181,000 credits. So now, if I hop in my ship and I go to, you know what, I think if I just use a teleporter and I go to a different station and sell it there for a higher price, I will make money. And then it crashes the market, so oh. then I can quickly buy back the items for cheaper, and then go to another space station and repeat. And uh, according to some people, it takes about one hour to get about 40 to 50 million credits, depending on how much you start with. So let's, uh, you know, let's go to this space station. Um, what about what about you guys, Jake? You got any um, you got any goals? You got any dreams for this stream? I have kind of just, every time I hop in here, I just kind of fly around and find planets that look nice and then get in photo mode and just take pictures of them. And I think that's more or less kind of the the type of No Man's Sky player that I am mm -hmm. is the ex explorer. I just am looking at things. I did get a random upgrade for my um, multi-tool that boosts the amount of credits I get from scanning things and identifying them by a thousand percent. Wow, that's that's tenfold, right? Wow. So if it was, I I, I would get like a thousand credits for it, and now I get like ten thousand credits for it. That's wow. crazy. I don't know if that math is checks out, but I get like five digits of credits every time I identify something. That's pretty nice. That's pretty mm -hmm. nice because that's like ten k. Probably identify pretty rapidly when you land on a new planet. Mm-hmm. That's pretty nice. 
I just uh, activated a giant alien portal. Should I go through it? Yeah, do it. Wait, a, a gate? Oh. Yeah. Where are you? Let me come to you. I'm on the planet. It was my next quest, and I was like, it's just like, activate what is portal. The planet. Okay. Hold on. Is that um, you? I'm coming Jake, to you. Don't your, go anywhere. Your ship's wing is literally inside my cockpit. I know. I, it's, we did not land very well. <laughs> Gross. Yeah, let me come see you. Yeah, the last time that I actually found a, a portal in the wild was in 1.0, and they were purely aesthetic at that point. <laughs> Yeah, this was like my mission. I had to go to like talk to different glyphs, and now I came here, and it was like, "Hey, oh, ice cream! Thanks, Karen." Guys, I got ice cream. Um, and it was like, "Hey, you want to turn this portal on?" So what did you say? Obviously, I said yes oh. because this could be the beginning of uh, Stargate. Hmm. I okay. Thoughts on Stargate? You know, I like great it. show. I liked it. I didn't. It's um, it's definitely got some weird stuff. It's got some problems, but you know what? Not bad for just like a procedural sci-fi show. Oh, oh are, like wait. I was talking about the theatrical film. I have not seen that since I was like four, so I cannot comment on that. No. Oh. I'm talking about Stargate SG One. The show's good. One. Yeah. Stargate good. Universe is one of the best television shows. Yes. I've heard. And that. it ended on a perfect cliffhanger, so they could bring it back whenever you know what atlantis i only saw the first season of it pretty good start pretty solid start yeah. really good tie-in to the existing sg1 too uh ian are you coming here yeah there you go. uh no i just happen to be here no <laughs> shut <laughs> up is this port this portal's on for everyone right no this is no, no. man's sky i don't see <laughs> uh, i don't see of, any portal in the media oh it requires energy. Yeah, these let are me, cool. Let me at least watch you go through. I'm going to take a picture of all of you. Thanks. I'll hold. Ow. Oh, that hurts. Don't do that to me. What? <laughs> Don't look at me and I have to shoot you. Okay, I'm going through now. Bye. Bye. Whoa! You just flat, like, left the system. Let me, yeah, let me interact with it. I don't know where I'm getting sucked up. I have to. It's making me, like, me put a bunch of carbon and stuff into each glyph. Yeah, same here. This is a great loading screen. It hurts my eyes. Oh, I man. need to make some warp. warp. I literally need more. I need dihydrogen to turn it on. Oh. It should be around here. I think that's if one of those things it's that's blue everywhere. crystals and or cobalt. There we go. Guys, I don't want know where I am, but it's scary. What's scary? Oh, I also saw a sandworm this week. Ooh. You want a freighter? One. Whoa. What? what? I'm going to go to okay. our base so that I can build some warp course. Well, I just summoned my freighter in the skies overhead. Oh, that is such a good... That that game does that really well. This game does that really well. Yes. It's like summoning your freighter and the uh, anomaly are mm -hmm. very cool. Big I fan. Just, I just got my freighter. It's pretty neat, though. Oh, an Atlas Protocol initiated. Guys, what's happening? <laughs> Don't you do it, baby boy. Where's my... Oh, my screen's going white. Oh. Wow, that freighter is way too close to the planet, man. You're going to get sucked in. I'm in the scary Atlas place. Are these all your frigates, Jake? Yes. You have six frigates? Uh, three are out on a mission. Dang. So you have nine? Yeah. Jeez. Can you buy warp cores at the station? Probably not, right? Uh, I think it depends on the station and the market. You might be able to buy them off of uh, the folks that land in the station, though, because they always have individual inventories. Nice. nice. All right, Jake, let me know if this opens for you when I do this. 
Yeah, I couldn't seem to power it up, but I'll, I'll see what happens when you do it. So, how's your week been, boys? Good. Good, Good to hear. <laughs> um, I was stuck at B&H for like an hour and a half yesterday because I went to pick up a bunch of gear and they didn't have these cables. And so the customer service lady was like, oh, the cables are right here. And then I discovered through hearing like customer service people talking, I guess they had a problem with their scanners where it was saying the item was brought from the warehouse to the main store, but it wasn't actually there. Mm -hmm. So it's like this whole thing. And I was very annoyed. And then it turns out the cables I was waiting for the entire time were the wrong cables. <laughs> so. I almost kind of love that now, because then I'm like, it's the wrong cables. But now I have these cables. <laughs> I know, that's my exact thought. Because my buddy's like, you want to return those? I'm like, no, I have them now. I'm okay with this. I'm okay. Yeah, how's the studio setup going? It's good. I got uh, I got an ATEM Mini, which is like a little, uh, oh. uh, what you call it, like board mm -hmm. to plug things into. Um, it's pretty good. It's all HDMI plugins. Um, so I think what I'm going to end up doing is plugging all like the consoles and stuff into that. Um, and then I, cause I was testing it with the camera and the, I can't tell if the camera's stuttering because it's going over a webcam USB connection or, um, what, but I'm going to test it with an Elgato, but I think we're going to end up getting a, a deck link card to put in whatever PC we do. Yeah to do like actual HDMI and then someday do SDI if I'm successful. But who knows? You don't have a um how are you doing how are you doing the um this the webcam for the Sony through a Sony app? So it's um it's m micro HDMI out to the ATEM mini. And then oh, that A10 way. Mini has a webcam out to, but that's the thing that's causing stuttering. Mm -hmm. But I think the stuttering is because the computer can't, or the USB connection on the computer can't handle it. You're, you have um, it plugged in via 3.0? I, I don't think it is 3.0. Oh, yeah, um, I'm going to try a different cable tomorrow. But what I'm going to end up doing is send the cameras through Elgato separately anyways. Yeah, um, well, what, what I would look up if you're going to do that is... Uh, a lot of manufacturers, camera manufacturers, especially nowadays, are offering um, free software to do to use your to, to do camera output over USB. Um, yeah. So, for example, Canon has that. Panasonic just came out with it, but they don't support my camera. But you just basically plug in USB to your computer from the camera, and it and run the software in the background, and it becomes a webcam. Uh, maybe I'll look into that. Um, I'm using my 60 as my webcam right now. Well, actually, no. I got a cam link, but it was like a cheap version for 20 bucks on Amazon, and it works fine. Yeah, yeah, that's the other way. Yeah, you could totally do that. Yeah, and then there's also like a PCI card that Blackmagic makes that's... Uh, we have the SDI version for uh, for work, so it's like five SDI ins, and they're all separate. So mm -hmm. they have a four HDMI version, which is a stupid amount of money. And then they make a two HDMI version, but the two HDMI version are not simultaneous. It's either one or one. And I'm like, why did you make this stupid decision? It's why like a you? like a built-in switcher in a bad way. Yeah, I'm like, they make some genuinely dumb decisions. Elgato or you talking uh, about Black Magic? No, uh, Black Magic. Yeah, like, they make good mid-tier stuff. It's it's like, it's like um, I, I found that with a lot of companies, especially like. The higher you go up in price, the more they are marketing to a very specific use case. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, okay, you're just not going to give me any versatility with this. Okay, all right, let me talk to some goobers. Oh, uh, Raycaster just messaged me that he's tuned in. Um, Hi. I promised him, or her, I don't actually know, or them, who knows? I promised them that uh, I would talk about Receiver 2 because they very generously gifted it to us on our Subpixel account. Uh, two words. Mm -hmm. One, smash together. Awesome. Uh, 
I played through like the tutorial and then did a couple runs. Um, it's a Ian, you played it too, right? Yeah, I've played about 10, 15 minutes of it, and I've played probably an hour of Receiver One. It's it's weird and cool. Like I really like the gun mechanics. Yeah, that's that's um, the key thing about Receiver is is basically if you if you guys haven't played Receiver, when you have a gun, you have completely different keys. So for example, I've been using the revolver. So you press one key to open the cylinder. You press another key to eject all the shells. You press another key one by one to enter the shells. You press the cylinder key to close it, and then you have a a different key to press down the hammer so when you get really good at it you're pressing like six or seven different keys in quick succession to quickly like dump the shells out and reload it um and it feels really good yeah and so you're like doing these i, I didn't get far enough in the whatever the, the story actually is but you're doing these runs in like a matrix dream world where you're mm -hmm. trying to hunt down these tapes while also shooting and avoiding turrets and it's like, it's probably because we've been playing a lot of horror games, but I was immediately terrified the entire time that, like, some oh, large really? creature was going to come chase me. Oh, um, you know what? Yeah, see, I, I knew it was only, like, bots and turrets, so I wasn't terrified. Yeah. But, uh, man, using the gun was really cool. The different keys for, like, popping the shells out. And mm -hmm. it's just, like, I want to play it more to learn more guns. Um, yeah. So I'm definitely going to do an actual longer stream with it because uh it's fun and as someone who likes i mean it's technically a roguelite so yeah someone totally. who enjoys those I'm gonna check it out i have uh, no idea where i am by the way i am <laughs> I'm, i came back on so i went through the portal on a planet then the noise got really scary and then it summoned me to the like atlas place where the giant sphere thing talked to me Mm -hmm. And then it sent me back to an ice planet, and you guys are nowhere nearby. You know, I wonder, if I leave, is that going to kick you from your game? If if you leave? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Maybe? I'm, you know what? I'm going to leave. Let's see what happens. Because I want to warp to where you are. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and so, just to tease, I, I will be writing a piece in the future for Spotlight about the micro-genre of gun fetishism games, so games like Receiver, like Hot Dog Horseshoes and Hand Grenade, like Pavlov, games where they, they really focus on the mechanics of how a game, of how a gun actually works, um, and manipulating a gun in a realistic fashion. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, I'm joining you, Will. Yay! Man, there's a lot of I'm still in my system, so whatever you did didn't wreck That's it good. on my That's yeah, good. I didn't, yeah, I didn't see anything different. That's good. Jake, you been playing anything? Um, Animal Crossing, as I have every day since March 20th, 2020. How is uh, the, um, the Halloween stuff? Um, good. The little pumpkin patch I have on my island is super cute. Um, and nice. the things that they, the, like, items and stuff that you can craft with them are, are neat. So I have little Halloween decorations outside of everybody's house. Um, been doing some, uh, I think I said last time I was, I downloaded some games off the, uh, bundle for racial justice. Mm -hmm. And I found a couple that were interesting, one of which was like a like an F zero pixel art top down thing that, whose name I can't remember right now because it's vector and then a bunch of numbers and I don't want to get the numbers wrong. Um, but that was fun. Some that didn't run, and I don't know if it was because there's now that weird bit with Mac computers about not supporting games of certain. Like there's they upgraded oh, to 64 bit bits. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if it's that there's some that are 32 bit and some that aren't. Um, what else? There was one specifically. Oh, I went back and I started replaying Lego Racers. Yeah. Um, it's the time trials are still very hard. <laughs> They're absolutely awful. 
to this day have been unable to beat. <laughs> but that game's real fun, and it's still solid after all these years. The gameplay is good. The, the tactical power-up system, I think, is the best of any kart racing game. Because, mm -hmm. um, like, Mario Kart's fun and and but it's those games where it's like the roulette wheel of items where lego racers actually makes it like you have to put some thought into it what yeah. you want to do yeah i like the like stacking stuff mm -hmm. too i think that's <clears throat> very clever and not a lot of other games have big really fan jumped on that yeah and it's definitely weird the second game came out and was made by a different developer and they had the same kind of roulette wheel item system that was in like Mario Kart and other kart racing games of its ilk. And I don't know why they decided to do that. I'd like to interview them about it, but they've not responded to my emails. <laughs> Bastards. Um, you know, I think that would be a fun segment for Extra Life is if we just kind of did, you know, a... a a stroll through some of the good findings that you found in the uh, facial justice bundle. That would be cool. Yeah. I can do I, a little bit more digging to find. Cause, yeah, because I know several of us have it, so we could almost make a collective list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I come through it. There's Wherever. some known entities that, uh, um, like games I had on other systems, like Overland was on there, which is really good, a nice little uh, turn-based tactics game um uh but in like really small maps like into the breach um yeah pyre was on there pyre's on there uh, yeah there Night was, in the woods. Like, oh really Night in the woods? Were the, was there another super giant i can't remember if Bastion. pyre was the only one Transistor. i don't think so i think pyre was the only one <clears throat> um yeah I, I i was just looking through it the other day so i was seeing if i had the latest versions of everything um, oh, There's the hex, the hex by Dan Mullins is on there. The subject of next week's spotlight video. What's if the hex? And do. Why does that sound like uh, an early '90s teen supernatural? Movie? It's so um, Pony, the developer of Pony Island. It's the second game. I interviewed him December of 2018, right after the hex came out, or a couple months after the hex came out. It's a uh, a bunch of video game trope characters. There's like one from an RPG, one from a fighting game, one from an FPS. Oh. All meet in like this bar at night and one of them it's like it's a murder mystery with a bunch of different video game archetype characters. Um, and each you play as each of them, and the gameplay shifts based on who the character is. It's real neat. Um, and Dan Mullins, I'm a big fan of his storytelling. Um, yeah, that so there's a lot of fun, like referential stuff to video games in general, to like the development like sub community. Um, it's very good. Play the hex and play Pony Island by Dan Mullins. Oh, yeah. Watch our spotlight yeah, video. I, I really want to try that. What We've talked it up a lot? What is what is Pony? Is that is that what I think it is? What do you think it is? Did you not watch our spotlight video about it? <laughs> I don't watch any of our content. Is it a My Little Pony? <laughs> no. <laughs> yep, that's it. You got it. <laughs> Go into it thinking that it's that, and then it. get back to me. What? Wait, do I have to watch the video? No, you should not watch the video before playing the game. Um, the video is about Daniel's development process. Um, oh no, the, the short version is that it's a game about ponies. The long version is that the developer of the pony game is Satan. <laughs> <laughs> is it's this great. a game about bestiality? No. I don't want to play it, so it's really good. <laughs> yeah, I'll try it. How do you how do you see how many systems you are away from the galactic core? Uh, if you go into the galaxy map, yeah, it I will think... tell you in the top left corner. Yeah, uh, the light years. Yeah, yeah. what's um, your six hundred eighty-seven 
Is it thousand point one three seven? I think it's thousand. Because you jump like a hundred ish at a time, or Wait, a, where, a couple hundred at a time. Where do you got? Let me check. I mean, we're all on the same system right now, so it should no, be the same. Will is no, not. I think I'm very far away. He went through a portal. Oh. Oh, are Kyle and I the only ones in this? No, it says. Uh, I think I'm think here Gibson, as well. I'm in. I'm in your system. I can see you flying around. Okay, we are six nine three point four seven seven. Oh. So I'm, I'm six eight seven. Six, Not that much farther. Six closer. Hooray! Can you just um, fly all the way? In the Will you been playing anything? Um. Did I already ask yeah, you that? Uh, I talked about Receiver Two, which I'm enjoying, and I'm gonna play more. Uh, other than that, I have been playing. Oh, Blasphemous. It, uh, it had a free weekend on the Xbox, so I was like, finally, like, oh, I'm gonna play this game. Boy, that game is fun <laughs> and good, and it has the my like favorite aesthetic, which is like what? creepy. What is that game? Um, so it's a 2D Metroidvania. Okay. Um, and there's and a lot it, of blood. It's very just like 2D Dark Souls. Um, Got it. In so the sense Jane of like Jamie. bonfires. Yep. and like that sort of stuff but it is really good i'm having a blast with it um it's got that like dark souls aesthetic it's got the um i don't even jake you might know the word for it but it's like creepy religion with like i'm the um i'm the penitent one who's like i don't know it's like i don't even know what it's called but you know that like weird it's like religion dark souls bloodborne vibes catholic adjacent yeah <laughs> it's very much that and i'm very into it um it's like yeah it's very creepy Ooh, recruitable freaking. um so i'm really enjoying that um i think the, i mean the free weekend's over so i think I'm, i might buy it if it's still on sale um otherwise i might just wait around for it to go on sale again Um, I don't think I've been playing anything else. Well, hey, thanks for sharing. You're welcome. Uh, you've been playing Blasphemous on the Xbox? Xbox, yes. X. Ah. I've got it on the Switch, and it's also very good. Does okay. it run well on the Switch? Mm-hmm. Okay. I was thinking of getting it on the Switch because I like the portability. Uh, uh, Kyle, you've been playing anything? A uh, few different things. I just started ODST with my friend Jimmy, who coincidentally just said hello, lads, in the chat. Actually, I think that was a while ago. No, that and was uh, that was Ninja. Yeah, his real name is Jimmy. No, it's Tyler Blevins. It's, oh, it's Ninja. I see yeah, what you're doing. ninjas are fam. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I, I sorry, that name. was like, yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> it's I'm Ellen surprised DeGeneres. I knew it. It's. <laughs> Can you imagine you if it came Tyler? out? You know how there's the whole thing where Katy Perry is JonBenet Ramsey? <laughs> what if Ella DeGeneres was Ninja? <laughs> I'd buy it. Yeah, I sorry, I don't Kyle. even know how to respond to that. ODST. <laughs> um, Are you liking it so ODST, far? ODST, yeah. It's, it's actually, it looks really good. Like they did, like Halo 3 looked basically like Halo 3 did to me mm -hmm. when playing the 360. ODST, they did a seriously good job with some of the textures. Uh, it just it looks like a, a new game, basically. So I've been playing that. A little bit of Left 4 Dead 2 with friends, and I'm trying to finish Horizon Zero Dawn, um, but I'm finding it difficult because I'm not having fun. You can just stop playing. Just do what I did about five hours in and just stop playing. <laughs> I you yeah. stop playing five hours in. Yeah, let me. Okay, real quick. I mean, I'm gonna, video games much. are too long. But, but Hor Horizon Zero Dawn. There's a lot Dawn, more after that. Horizon Zero Dawn commits one of the gravest open world sins ever, which is having open world items that you need to collect and taking more than two milliseconds for your character to collect them. When your character has to, like, stop, reach down, and snap the neck of a plant and then stand back up every time you collect something, it's like, no, 
not not gonna happen. Well, also, see, I don't all, all the characters T posing at the beginning of cutscenes for a split second was like, nope. Oh, I never encountered that. I, was, I haven't even encountered that, and I played it on day one on PC. Um, uh, yeah, I wonder if they fixed it, because I, I played it about a month after launch on console. But it was like, like the first millisecond of a cutscene was always slightly janky, and then everything would load in. Uh, but yeah, sorry, it, Kyle, go ahead. No, I mean, I can definitely understand a bunch of those complaints. I just, I don't know, it's like, I liked the story up until I had to leave the, like, starting area. And then it, it was just like, you can go everywhere. And I was like, well, I'm like I don't I don't know like I don't know I don't <laughs> this is gonna be a weird complaint I don't like the way you like shoot things like I yeah. I feel like I I really really have gotten down the accuracy portion but it feels like I don't do anything and I've tried different bows I've tried different types of arrows I've like looked up you know here's how you do combat in this game and here's how you fight against you know these different robots and stuff like that and I just it's like I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I just don't feel effective as a player. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I, I constantly die or, or I'm just extremely overpowered by enemies that I feel like I shouldn't be overpowered by. I don't I don't know. It was, it was weird. I haven't I haven't picked it up in a in a minute, so maybe I'll try it again. I do I do want to like it. I mean like I'm super into the story. Yeah, I I, I really like the story. I just couldn't get past the gameplay to continue the story. Yeah. It's interesting you talk about the, the combat, because I felt that there was definitely a point where I felt like I was like ruthlessly efficient. Really? And I don't know if maybe that was... I can't remember if that was much later in the game than, than you probably are. But um, I don't know. I did also... I don't know if I tried out more than like three or four of the bows. Because I just found a groove that I liked. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know, like the, I, being as they're robots, I kind of expected the like electric arrows to be basically OP, and they're mm -hmm. not at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, this doesn't make sense to me. Um, I don't know. The, and some of the fire arrows, like I, I get that it's a lot to deal with like elemental damage and stuff like, and I don't, I don't know. It just is weird to me. But I'm not done. I will try it. Where oh. where are you in the story? Um, so I am heading towards I think the main capital city, the big city. Okay. Have uh, you have you done any of the shoot? What do they call them? The long neck stuff. Like no cauldrons. Have you done any of the cauldrons? I did. That's like the kill all the enemies slash let the hostages go sort of stuff in the like underground no i oh no 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 like the going in and finding the old technology stuff yeah no i have not okay cuz i can't remember i remember there was definitely a lull in the the part of the story that interested me most which was the how did the world get like this and yes. why is it like this now there yeah. was definitely a lot more like local current geopolitical stuff mm. that I, I had to get through before I got to that, but that part of the story is really good. Yeah. Once everything starts getting revealed. Sure. And I mean, like, I did the whole... Um, I forget what they're called. It's, it's basically just a little tiny, like, mini-map mission where you go into, like, an area that's filled with enemies and you have to go, like take the flags or something i don't know it's been a it's been a minute since i've done that and that was fun because it was against humans and like my arrows i could one shot a human and it was like this makes sense and i don't know whenever mm -hmm. it's up against the robots it, it just it just felt like i couldn't do enough damage no matter how hard i tried um anything else you've been playing super hot mind control delete yeah, I, I, I played maybe an hour of that. Uh, how how you finding it? It's real repetitive. Yeah, it's it's it weird is. because it's like, like the first one was short, but it at least kind of had a campaign in a way. Yeah. This one feels like it's just made it's it procedural so, endless. It's so long. Like some of the some of the little bits you have to go through towards the end where it's like, oh, you have to beat this one block. You have to mm -hmm. beat like 10 missions in a row. And it's just really 
punishing after a while. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of like kind of like Super Meat Boy in a way where you're like quick respawning, but it yeah. feels yep. like you're just starting to bash your head against it and, and you want to be able to just back out a little bit and come at it later. But it's yeah, a lot it, of like, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And it's like, oh, this is too much. I've gotten to the point where I, I will die and put it down for a few days and then bring it back up and beat like one or two more blocks. And mm -hmm. then be like, I can't do any more for right now. I have to go play something else. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed Super Hot all the way back to yeah. the initial like it, Unity browser tech demo of it um it's one of the best vr experiences i've ever had yeah and i've been i've been meaning to have to try out the vr experience because because i like the games and then people have been crazy yeah. about the vr stuff yeah it's great um anything else no i think that's it cool uh for me i've been playing um i downloaded genshin impact i did not actually play it yet just been busy. I did play VTOL VR, which we discovered last Thursday on stream. It's basically it's it's basically a very realistic military flight simulator in VR only. And hmm. um, I think I saw you guys playing that after you were playing Squadrons, right? Yeah, yeah. Basically, we had a really crazy stream, but I feel like it was one of our best. Basically, we started with Squadrons in VR. And then we went to Elite Dangerous in VR. And then I, on a whim, bought and installed um, VTOL VR because it's another flight sim VR. And it had gotten really good reviews and I'd seen a video of it. And VTOL VR, it was, it was actually crazy because it was like, Star Wars Squadrons is not a good VR game. It's just not, it's not a good VR implementation. Elite Dangerous is a little bit better, but it still has some issues. Um, and then VTOL VR is just like one of the best VR games I've ever played. So the main things they're doing in that game are you're in the flight cockpit. First of all, it's completely touch controls. So you can't use a joystick, you can't use HOTAS, you are just using touch controls, but everything in the cockpit is touchable is a button that you have to toggle. So for example, if you're gonna arm your weapons, you have to reach out, grab the cover, flip the cover, then grab the toggle and flip the toggle. Um, you reach out and grab the throttle, you grab the joystick, which you would think would be bad, but it actually works pretty well in that you're not holding a joystick in real life, mm -hmm. but you're still able to control it pretty well. Um, and it does just like, like it's, it's tries to be realistic. So for example, like when you get in the plane at the start of a mission, you have to go through the startup procedure. You have to turn on your displays, turn on the batteries and turn on the engines and all this stuff. And then like you're tracking units, you're having to target them using a pretty good replica of like an F-16 uh, targeting system. And it's just, it's a combination of a flight sim in VR and a flight sim that embraces VR by giving you a lot of stuff to mess with and mess around with. And it just, it feels so good. So I've I've been having fun with that. I, I just to, to cap it off, I'll give you an example of, I downloaded a Steam Workshop campaign for Desert Storm and it's like a recreation of, of Desert Storm. Um, mm -hmm. and I played the first mission and it was very simple. The first mission was literally just like, Hey, we need you to just like recon the, the Kuwaiti Iraqi border and make sure nothing's <laughs> popping off there. So it was just like, you start in your plane and then they're just like, okay, we need you to take off rendezvous with your wingmates and then fly to the border. And like, that's the entire mission. But it was like, you start on the taxiway and I had to boot the plane up and then I had to contact the radio tower and like request permission for takeoff. And they're like, Roger, permission granted, you know, taxi to runway three, six. And I'm like, you have to like navigate the taxiways, get to runway three, six. Then you like it flaps down, punch it, pull back, gear up, flaps up. You're like, I'm good. And then I'm circling the airport and I start getting contacts on my radar and their friendly contacts. And I'm like looking over my shoulder and I see dots and the dot like comes speeding past me and it's my wingmate and he like circles <laughs> around. And like my AI wingmates are like come around into formation with me. And it was just an insane experience yeah. in VR. It just felt so good for such a simple mission. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's VR is one of those things where it's very hard to recommend it because the amount of technology you need, even for something standalone like the Quest, which starts at $300, mm -hmm. it's all about the apps. It's all about the games. 
and yeah. there's really only a handful of games that I can heavily recommend. A lot of it is just not that good. Even Half-Life Alex was just like a mediocre to okay experience, but like Really? Vito, yeah, it's 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 okay. It's it has a lot of polish in it, but the gunplay is not that good. It's they kind of just present it as a horror game in a way. Like there's they do a lot of like you are very low on ammo. You have to like creep through this area. Oh no, your flashlight's out, and it's like I don't know that I want to be playing a Half Life horror game. Um, and then the, and I have then, like only heard good things about Half Life Alex, so that's really interesting to me. I I have as well, but it's just like if you compare the the gunplay in Half Life Alex to like to like Pavlov or Hot Dogs Hand Grenades, Hot Dogs Horseshoes and Hand Grenades, like any of these other games that implement guns pretty well in VR. It's just not as good. Mm. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with, like, it definitely feels like a AAA game in terms of polish and asset design and, you know, like, voiceovers, etc. You don't get that a lot in VR. Yeah. But... Yeah, well, I mean, one of the one of the first things... Like, obviously, I, I wanted to play that. I just don't have a VR headset of any kind. Mm -hmm. One of the first things I'm going to do when I get my apartment and actually like have started saving up, I really would like to buy by that time. It could be like an index two or something like that, or just the index. I don't know. Like whatever the top of the line VR headset is. Yeah. And I really want to play Alex on that level. Like, I don't know, just to like, if it was designed specifically by valve, like with this, you know, headset in mind, I would definitely want to try that out. I think the finger tracking stuff is, really interesting um and i don't know yeah well but but the index doesn't have finger tracking that's only oculus that's only on the quest does isn't the whole thing with the index that it can track fingers no the whole thing the or? whole thing with the index is they have knuckle controllers so you can you can take your hand off the controller and it, and your controller will stay attached to your hand because of the strap around the knuckles and then the other thing about the index is it has a very it has a much higher resolution and higher refresh rate the screen okay that's that's pretty much it and and honestly i think the index is a thousand dollars vr is not worth a thousand dollars right now um i paid 350 for my oculus rift s and i'm struggling just to justify that um so yeah it's 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 fun to mess around in vr it's just hard to find games that justify that they, cost index does have finger tracking it does have finger tracking it does i'm looking it up right now it but is it well, what do you mean by finger tracking because the thing about the quest is you don't have to hold a controller at all and it will track your hands and your fingers i mean you have a strap but it also has sensors for when you put your fingers around oh but the oculus has that too it has it has sensors for when you put hands on the buttons so, for yeah. example, like like if you take your finger off the trigger, it shows you pointing your finger. If you put your finger on the trigger but don't press it, then it shows you slightly closing yeah. your index. That's nope. what they have. Yeah, but my point is that doesn't that doesn't get you much. The Oculus has that. Okay. I mean, I'm still more inclined to get something not owned by Facebook than. Owned yeah, but by that's Valve. that's the other thing is that, the, like. The index is too expensive. Well, that's what I'm saying is like, if I wait, it'll probably go down in price. I don't know about that. Cause even the HTC Vive is still like five, $600. Um, but that, that's kind of the other problem is that the market is, is coalescing around standalone headsets, which is starting to limit what you can do with, with games. So for example, Vito VR, is not going to be a standalone headset game, but that limits you to the Index or the Rift S, which is basically a discontinued platform. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. you also have developers, like developers of Pavlov and of Beat Saber and of, um, i trying to think of another game. They've basically shifted all their development resources towards developing for the standalone VR versions, which are not quite as good looking. So it's one of those things where it's like you can have a Rift S or you can have an index and it will display better, but you're still going to be running a, the handheld version, the standalone mm -hmm. version of the game, because that's what the developers are making it for. They're making it for that lesser platform. So it's 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 a, the market's in a weird state right now. Um, 
and it's just um, I don't mean to interrupt the mm-hmm. fascinating conversation but I've been hanging out at the center of the galaxy for a little bit um, so I, I, I went through a portal um, and I thought it was back to you guys mm-hmm. and then I opened my galaxy map and it just said zero light years you just There's got a bunch of people here. <clears throat> wait, 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 quick um, question. Real real question though. Did you cheat engine this? Because I was thinking about doing that. No, I've just been literally hanging out here for the past like probably 20 minutes, 15, 20. <laughs> wait, wait, so the game just let you go there after like six hours of gameplay? I went to a space station and it listed a base and I was like, oh, Ian must have made a new base. That's a funny name. And then I clicked on it and that brought me here. Hey, let's... Okay, I'm going to leave the game. I think we should all leave the game and then join Will's game. Yeah, one sec. I don't know if it'll save my position. But I think if you stay in the game, we should be okay, maybe? I'm afraid it's going to pop you guys back right where you were. Why don't you just go make a base real quick? On a planet. Oh, true, that's not a bad idea. Let me land. Um, but anyways, yeah, so other than VTOL VR, I don't think I've been playing anything. I've just been too busy. I do want to give Genshin a, a try. Genshin Impact seems pretty interesting. I've seen some interesting side-by-side comparisons of uh, clips from Genshin Impact where it looks like some of the animations have been lifted straight from other games. Yeah, like I wouldn't... frame for frame. I wouldn't put it past him. Well, I, IP law in China is real loose. Let's put it that way. Um, we should... If COVID ever leaves, we should all go to that unlicensed Blizzard theme park. <laughs> oh, the Super Mario World uh, is opening uh, in spring. The uh, at Universal Tokyo, I believe. Universal yeah. Studios Tokyo. And Orlando is getting it sometime. Oh, I don't think I can build on this planet. Is there too many people there? All right, no, I, I'm flying through the star field. I think it's like towards the Will. important planet. Yeah, no, it's just, I, Jake, I think you're going to spawn with us. Because that's what happened to me. I spawned near I you guys. I clicked on Hunt 270. No, no, but what I'm saying is when I did that, I just spawned back where I was. So I oh. think I think if we, huh. if we all leave except for Will, then when we spawn back in, we'll spawn where he is versus where the other people in the group are. Man, why is this mech so bad? Yeah, I seem to be in the same place that I was. Uh, something we got to talk about is future sandbox games. Um, we definitely talked about. S- uh, is it seven? Well, is it seven days to die? Seven days to die. What's the other one I keep confusing you... it for? Dead by Daylight. Got it. Did y'all play Seven Days to Die for Spooky Pixel previously? Because I feel like I made a thumbnail for that. No, Zach and I played it one time on stream when Ian couldn't make it. Yes. Okay, that must be what I'm thinking. But, uh, yeah, that's the only time I've ever played it on stream. Great game. Really fun. It can all turn in an instant, too. Um... Also, Will wants to do Minecraft Vanilla, which I think we should do as a community server. That would be fun. Yeah. That would be fun. Oh, I still have a server that is just doing nothing. Um, thinking about doing Factorio, but really, I think that's less for the stream and more just because I want to play Factorio. Factorio's good. It's, oh, it's just an incredible, how, incredible. How do I game. build again? Z? Or is it X? Up on the D-pad. Oh, it is Z. I'm an idiot. Um, there's also... Uh, don't starve. But I'm not crazy about that. Satisfactory once they have dedicated servers. Um, I'm trying to remember other games on the list if you're in chat shout out what uh survival multiplayer crafting games you like did you play scrap scrap astronaut what was it called uh scrap mechanic yeah no i think that's more of a i i have it and i played it a little bit i think it's more of like a sandbox game than it is a 
lowercase sandbox as opposed to oh. like a like a <laughs> a continuous building game. Okay. Yeah, cuz I knew that I thought from what I had seen of that it was kind of in that in that satisfactory kind of vein. There um, is um another game that got announced recently which looks a lot like Factorio but 3D. Which, Ooh. you know, maybe, maybe when that comes out. The thing that bites look us up, um, a lot. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, look up. I think it's called Vulcanoids. It's uh, like a, it's yeah. another mining. Yeah. Oh, Volcanoids. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. No, Jake's got it right. Will's just got it wrong. Oh, I sorry. I, I looked at it before, but it doesn't have dedicated servers, I think, yet. Yeah, that's the thing that bites us is, we is these games it. come out, but they don't have dedicated servers yet. Uh, so it's like... It's hard for us to play them. Pretty sure my game crashed. So. Oh, that's no. Good. But I made a base computer, so... Oh, okay. I'm gonna reload the game. But maybe I'll just come... So I can just host a new session, right? Yeah. Should yeah. we hop out? Yeah, I'm gonna hop out. Okay. We're about to beat the game, boys. Um, it did not look like anything special. Play that well, I think you have to go through the center, right? Isn't there a black hole at the center? I didn't see one, but <clears throat> you can certainly look for one. It's gonna be a lot like, um, what's that game? It's gonna be like the ending of Spore. You guys ever beat Spore? No. I no. did not ever beat Spore. <laughs> so Spore gets to this point where it's like, you gotta conquer these solar systems and then head to the center of the galaxy. And you get to the center of the galaxy and you head through the black hole at the center of the galaxy and you meet this guy, this alien, and he's like, hi, I'm Jeff, here's a crazy tool. And he gives you this like cheat engine type tool. <laughs> and then you can just keep playing the game with that tool. <laughs> and like, that's um, the ending. To play, do I just play the game normally and then you guys can join me? Yes. Okay, cool. I didn't know. Uh, yeah. Let's see where I spawn. So, yeah, that's, that's, you know, we could do, well, Spore's not multiplayer, but I, you know, Spore gets a lot of crap and it probably should. It's a bit, bit underwhelming, but I have beaten that game several times. It's, it's kind of a fun, weird little thing. I have, I have the like collector's edition. I think I gave mine away. I did get it on launch at launch. Yeah, I, I did. I think I did too. <laughs> that was that game promised a lot, and then it was like, oh, it only takes me like six to, or eight hours to beat this game. Yeah, and it's like, what? Evolution isn't real. Why what? am I playing? This? <laughs> Damn you, Satan! Tricked us again. <laughs> Trick me again. I, I do remember. I I grew up with people whose parents would not let them buy that game for that reason. Wow. I'm surprised my I, parents let me. You know, honestly, I could see that because that game was all about like, let's do evolution, bruh. Man. Splice our, splice our genes together. And you can make like, like, Levi's. You got a pair of Dockers. I'm Boom. all the way back at my base. Which one? The one my... you just made? Nope. My very original base. Oh, I crashed. But can um, you can you transfer to the new base you made? I don't. How do I do that? Because there's no portal there. Oh. Well, oh, you didn't do you build remember, a portal to it. Do you remember the no, name? No, I built the base computer and it crashed. Do you remember the name of the base that you warped to? It was like Gilmar or something like that. Okay, I'm loading into your game. Let's see if that's available. My game crashed. Yeah, mine literally just shuddered to a halt. Will no give us all a virus. No better <laughs> way to end this. <laughs> okay, let me see. I'm going to go to the space station. If, uh, as a final thing, y'all could come visit my work in progress base. I think it's neat and has potential. Jumping into your streak. Oh, 
I found it. You go. Uh, it, I just that, found, found it. Found the system. Oh, because you've been to that system. Yeah. Abel Gamma is the is the planet. Subpixel Base four five one seven nine three. That's where I am right now. Wow. Oh wait, no. I see you, Will. I'm still loading in. Um. Okay. I'm gonna go to the space station. Or I guess I don't have to. I can just go to my thing over here. Okay. So what's the plan, Will? The plan is I'm going to check <clears throat> this portal to see if they have anything. Because I'm not really sure how to get back there other than seeing if there's another portal back there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It may be on it, under space station. It seems to be in a different system than I was in before. So yeah, so Will, if you go to space stations, it may show. Did you go to the space station in that? I did go to that space station. So yeah, so it it should hopefully be in that list of space stations because you recently yes, it visited is here. Okay. So I wonder if you you wouldn't see it then. I would not. Well, you go there. What's it called? Okay. Leak who leak Hulu. It's like Leco Hulu. I just warp, so I, let me check okay. the name once I land. Once you load in, let me see if it comes it up in my list. Because I'm, I'm standing at the portal in front of the space station. Gotcha. Wow, look at that shit. We have our papers ready. Because <laughs> worst case, I could just build a portal at my base now, right? Yeah, and then theoretically we could go to it. Yes, yeah, as long as it shows up in the list. Because I think that's the mm -hmm. iffy part, is how do we get your stuff to show up in the list? It should... But yeah, because you're in my world. Yes. Um, okay, I'm in Leak Holu. Okay, let me check. This portal. L i k h o l u. No, I don't. I, I think go build the the okay. portal. Let me go. Or if I wonder if I put a portal on my freighter. Yeah, that and your freighters work. here. Yeah, that that should yeah. work. Uh, I'm gonna let you guys know right now if you're watching, we're gonna be playing Jackbox Seven on Thursday. Um, it's going to be a family and friends type of stream. If you want to play along, make sure to join our community Discord. Uh, I'll get that link in the chat right now. And with that, you can. We'll be posting the room codes inside of that community Discord. We don't we don't want no riffraff in our games. So Will I understand if I have not played the first six Jackbox games? Mm, no, no, you should probably binge them. Have you have you you've played Jackbox? Have you never played Jackbox? No, I thought I was, yeah, I was, was being, being facetious. facetious. We have okay. uh, Jackbox 3 or 4 here at, 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 in the Terrio household. Yeah, I have uh, a physical of Jackbox 3, but it's, it's like, it takes a lot of setup. <laughs> Can you imagine if you made, if they, that would actually be a cool collector's edition is if they sold a physical copy of Jackbox, like as a physical board game. That would be fun. That would be a lot. <laughs> All right, Will, let us know when you've built this thing. Yeah. I'm... Who is shooting at me? It's me. Oh, wait, can y'all, Kyle and Ian, can you see the multi-tool that I have or does that not show up here? I'm trying to whip it out. No, it doesn't. It doesn't come out. Because uh, we're in a passive environment. It's cool. It's alien. It looks like fleshy. 
Ugh. Wow, there are some very cool freighters here. Oh. Hey, buddy, let me buy your ship. Other players freighter already present? Why? Twenty-seven million. Hubba bubba. Maybe easiest just to do it at your base, Will. Yeah. It's like keeps trying to get me to go towards this objective. Uh, you guys been watching anything interesting? Um, as the three of you probably saw on Twitter, but people watching the stream may not have. I finally watched all the Alien films. I hadn't seen three or four. Or or the Alien vs. Predators. Um, first one and, is uh, not terrible, I will admit. The first one is not terrible. And it's Lance Henriksen is yes. in it. Nobody yes. told me that. Yep. Um, but uh, Alien 3, I saw what they were going for. I need to go track down the assembly cut now, because I've heard that's better. Mm. Um, but Alien Resurrection, it's not good. It's garbage. There's some good alien effects, some suits and some robotics. But who's that the, movie is not good. Who's Isn't the director that on that one, one again? John somebody. Joss Whedon wrote it. Oh, that's what it is. Uh, okay. Isn't that the one where it's in a spaceship over, like a like a station over Earth, right? It's a spaceship that ends up on its way to Earth because that's what like the spaceship's lockdown procedure is, that yeah. it autopilots back to Earth. Oh. Is that also the one where they have a bunch of aliens in like a room and they're like they yes the the doctors are like playing with them essentially yes they're, they're trying like, oh, to they're deliberately gonna... breed them yes yes it's like deep blue sea where they're trying to figure out what sort of medicinal applications i have seen I, I couldn't remember if i actually saw it but i do remember watching that a very long time ago and being like this isn't scary at all winona Ryder's an android yes. ron perlman is in it I oh, yeah. That. He makes that basketball shot. Or Sigourney yeah, Weaver. Sigourney no. Weaver. Cause the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was at that, that period in time where every cool movie had a basketball scene to show yeah, right. how cool the protagonist was. It's like Catwoman. Cool. They were like, how can we best display that Ripley now has alien DNA so all her skills are heightened? Basketball. That's what Joss Whedon said to himself as he was writing the script. I'm pretty honest with you, you know, I'm not a huge Joss Whedon fan. <laughs> was there a shawarma scene? Like, there was not a shawarma scene. Oh, God. But it was all of, like, all of Joss Whedon's, like, worst writing characteristics are on full display. Everyone's, like, way too quippy with one another. Mm -hmm. And there's, like like sass at very inappropriate times this coming from someone who loves buffy the vampire slayer um anybody ever watched dollhouse by him i i have no. seen it it's it not has terrible. some good episodes yeah and then some yeah. really bad episodes. Yeah. but buffy is like that too the later yeah. seasons well have you built this thing yet i'm Doing the base computer right now. I'm claiming my site. Site B. Yeah. That's another franchise with some bad, bad sequels. Um. Yeah, I've only seen Alien and Aliens. Oh, and then I have I have also seen uh, so my lied? my personal favorite to hate, Prometheus, uh, which I could not stop stop laughing when I saw that in theaters. It was. Not good. I 
my now my feelings about all the alien films that I don't like is essentially my sa- the same feeling I have with the Star Wars prequels, which is I love the production design. Yep. Even yes. Prometheus. Prometheus has some of the best gorgeous. It does. Yeah. The, it it does. Yeah. So good. The ship is great. The, the big, are really good too. stupid fishbowl space helmets. Mm-hmm. I yeah. love. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, I do think spacesuit design peaked with the Nostromo spacesuits. Mm-hmm. Those things are awesome. Though apparently all the actors got heat stroke inside of them. Yeah, but that's their fault. That's art. <laughs> If you're not struggling for your art, it's not you ain't real. stroking from me. Mm-hmm. You're. Ugh. But even Alien, Alien Cubed, and Alien Resurrection had like some neat production design. But um, the story's oh crap. Out. Alien Covenant your, also. You can get your character to turn in a really tight circle if you just keep going backwards, like on in all directions. I'm watching it happen. It's real good. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm watching both of you do really it. Really fast. <laughs> okay, Will, portal's yet? gonna be <laughs> gonna be open in about two seconds. Okay. okay. I mean, portal's up. I guess I don't need to power it on my end. Do yeah, it? I don't think you need to. Now you're thinking with portals. Okay, other bases. Uh, I don't, don't see it yet. Sesagoni Luvad base. Maybe if we pop back in. I don't see it in other bases can or you, group bases, pow- but I see subpixel oh, base 45, yeah. 17, 93. Can you power I'm get on my ship and then come back in? Can you power, power on upload your... unavailable base too small? Let me oh, add yeah. more to my base. <laughs> Build something. Throw some walls up. It's a barn raising. Call the Amish. Uh, Jake, have you seen? The Expanse Season 4 yet. I need to talk to somebody about this. I have seen The Expanse Season 4. I gotta be honest I've with you, I was the really disappointed with Season 4. <laughs> really? Yeah. The, I thought the it was last... better than the previous three. I, I disagree. I thought it was their worst. Um, wow. It felt like the last four episodes was just a lot of, like, manufactured... Uh, well, I don't want to say manufactured, but just a lot of, like, contrived crises. <laughs> One after the other, and it was just like, it was like, you really didn't need to write this many crises in just for this, like, three-episode climax. It Uh, was, yeah, I don't know if that's because because it was all packed into, like, a season of TV, because it was fairly faithful to the book, mm -hmm. the events that take place in that book. Um, Like, they didn't, like, my, my thing that I'm always bothered by is when shows add crises to stuff that was already in the book. Yeah. Um, but all of that was in the the novel, but perhaps, you know, because the novel's 200 plus thousand words, they're spaced out a little better. Yeah, maybe it handled it better. Yeah, yeah it just felt like it felt like 90% of the back half of that season was just these crises that it felt really transparent to me where I'm looking at it, I'm just like, oh, the writers wanted a crisis that it, like it matters in the moment in that it's a bad crisis, but at the same time, they could have it, it mattered nothing to the overall plot. <laughs> and it was just it, like, yeah, as you a didn't season, it was kind of a lot right after one right after the other. Yeah, um, and it, so and that th- just kind of put me off it. It'll be interesting to see how season five go. Have you read the books? No, no, I, okay. I may read them after the show's done because I, I really like the show, so I, I kind of want to stick with the show, you know yeah, because I mean? there's um. Next season, if you're wor- if you're worried about crises happening one right after the other, depending yeah. on how they do this next season, it's going to be a yeah. lot. I don't know because it's weird because I think about it now. Like season one was just like an endless amount of crises, but the way that it worked, it worked together really well, and it like built the story in the world. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more like mm. it's weird to use the word the term small scale. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a little more confined than, yeah. than, pre- than the other ones. Yeah, yeah. Season four just felt like it felt like things were happening and they wanted to make they wanted to ramp up the tension. So Base they just loaded. So they just had bad things happening in it. All right, let me check. Base uploaded, you said? Yes. Still do not see it. I still don't see it either. Let me pop out and then back in. Yeah, let me do I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go all the way out of the game. Well, not all the way out, but I'll... Um, 
Yeah, because because they just announced the season five release date, which I believe is like mid December. Yeah, it was December something. Um, I mean, I'm still gonna watch that still. I, I, I that show, I still enjoy the show. It's just season four. Seasons one through three were so good, and the season four, it just kind of started to rub me the wrong way towards the end. So I'm like, don't do this to me. Come on, come on. I did. I did really like that. All of the space stuff is in sixteen nine, and all of the surface stuff was in two three five. I thought that was yes. a neat. Yeah, um, I do like that little, uh, like, production thing. Yeah. Oh, you know, speaking of um, aspect ratio, I did watch season two of The Boys recently. Mm, same. Uh, what same. did you think? What you oh, I think? To watch that. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I mean, I yeah. watch anything with Carl Urban in it. Nobody told me Carl Urban was in Xena. Now yeah. I have to go watch that. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I I was I went in with low expectations because I was seeing a lot of people basically saying like, season two is awful. It's nowhere near as good as season one. But I I enjoyed it. I I I'm not gonna say it wasn't as good as season one, but I think a lot of season one was the novelty, and season two didn't have the novelty as much because you you already kind of know. The, extre the extreme measures of this world, etc., the, the weird situation of it, but it was still very, very enjoyable to watch. Okay, let me check the I base think list. I'm on IMDb because I don't want to get his name wrong, but um, the guy who plays Homelander. <laughs> oh, um, Anthony he's Starr. Aust he's Australian. Yeah. He's probably one I, of the best American accents. Yeah, yes, that and uh, it's. I don't know. That it feels like some Emmy award winning oh yeah acting. If not least, Emmy from, then he's going to be he's going to be a lot more stuff from now on. Mhm. Mm right, Although and... I every time I see him I think he's like a better Troy Baker. Well, he does kind of have <laughs> some a Troy Bakerism about him. Yes. All right. Thanks for watching Subpixel Hot Takes. Troy's not watching this. He's not. Don't worry. <laughs> Will now I don't see it. I don't see any of your bases Ooh. showing up now. Yeah. What is it called? It's called Butt Center. Oh, I see it. You got it's it. It's in group. It's in group base. I yeah. don't have a tab for group base. It's grayed out. I had to exit out of the game and come back in. Yeah, exit out of the game entirely or just back to the menu because I went to the exit the menu. Oh, it says unable to download base. <sighs> Downloading data but center. This is a good stream, guys. What if I exit the game and come back again? No, I don't unable do that. to download base. <laughs> I can report it for inappropriate content. No. Don't report butts. Don't report butt center. Group, but center, loading. Um, other things I've been watching. Gundam. I won't bore you guys anymore with it, but... Okay, well, I will say this. I will say this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I started a new series called Gundam Victory, which is from 1993, I believe. And it's... It's a good year. It's weird because... This is... 90... There are... There are 80s Gundam series that look better and more professional than this series from 1993. This this series like definitely has like a like a 70s like early 80s Saturday morning cartoon vibe to it in terms of like production value. But at the same time, this series I've only watched like the first 5 episodes of it. It already has like like civilians being like obliterated. <laughs> it has like a 12-year-old kid like shooting people point blank. It has, like, this character who's just, like, you haven't been the same ever since you got in that mobile suit and started killing people. And it's just, like, this is way too heavy of a series. It's just, like, incredibly heavy, like, child soldier, like, the cost of war, like, civilian death. And I'm just, like, what, what am I watching? This is really... This is some pretty depressing stuff. So it's very surprising in that sense. Because normally Gundam is just like, oh, war is tough, but we're going to do it, y'all. And this is more just like, no, war sucks. Everybody dies. Watch these civilians get obliterated. <laughs> um, okay, I still don't see it. Let me try reload one more time. 
<laughs> Kyle, the beard has entered the system. Yeah, I just came back in a second time. Okay, let me try that. Uh, William and Yosefitz Crispers, you been watching anything? Uh, we finished uh, What We Do in the Shadows. Nice. The, very good. Very good. I need to very finish the second show. season. Oh, uh, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't watched second season yet. Second season was still very good. Unable to download base. Dang. But so even if you guys good. come back into the game, you're not with me now. In my no, it just dropped me off where I last was, which was at the yeah. station. So maybe I should try leaving the game and load back in. Yeah, I would try. Well, should we Google and maybe see if we can't get to it because he's near the galactic center and the game is like, oh, you can't just flip to that. What if we just end this now? <laughs> Somebody will get a screenshot so we can post it. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, we are Subpixel. Let's go down the line. Jake, where can people find you and give us your final impressions on this season of The Sandbox? Um, you can find me, Jake Terrio, on Twitter at underscore Jake Terrio. Um, I still, I really like, I really like this game. I like just flying around and, and touching down on planets and seeing what's, what's living down there, snapping some photos and then moving on to the next one. That's, mm -hmm. uh, I'm very into it. Hey man, whatever rubs your ducky. Mm. Uh, Kyle, uh, thoughts on this season and where can people find you? Um, I didn't have a bad time playing this game. Uh, I pretty much did everything I wanted to do when I first played this game, which was get a ship, get off a planet, look at some other planets, get some stuff, dig up some bones and sell them, which thanks, Jake, we did that. And You're welcome. yeah, now it's like, Okay, I feel like I've done, I've completed the loop, the loop, you know. So I'm not, I'm not too unhappy, but I also don't feel the need to continue playing. And if for some reason you want to find me on social media, you can find me at Kyle of the Beard on Twitter and Instagram. All right, and Will, uh, thoughts on No Man's Sky, season seven of the Sandbox, and where can people find you? This game sucks. You can find me at Hunt Two Seventy <laughs> on Twitter. No, this game's okay. I like the freighters. It's probably the coolest part of the game. Uh, real quick, there is a base in the terminal called Galactic Center. <laughs> so I'm going to that right now. Okay, I'm going there too. Um, you know, I think I talked about it last stream. I think there is a lot of cool stuff going on in this game. They just don't really know how to tie it together or give you a sense of, you know, motivation or progression through it. Um, and, and I wish they would work on that because, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff. The planets, the yeah. spaceships, the whole aesthetic, uh, you know, the rovers. They're adding a lot of cool content. They just don't know how to string it together. Uh, and if you want to see me on Twitter, you can find me at Think Gibson. And if you don't care about any of us, but you do care about that sweet, sweet Subpixel content, you can find it at subpixelfilms.com. That takes you right to our YouTube channel. We've got all sorts of stuff, including archives of every single stream, as well as edited videos every monday we've got a brand new spotlight video which is kind of a analysis critique deep dive into gaming or a video game in particular or any aspect of the gaming community we also have uh short documentaries on subjects such as uh, uh, an arcade inside of a 150 year old bank vault or a game jam that takes place in the middle of iceland we also have lots of hilarious edited content such as nearly 50 episodes of scan lines where we play really old weird games and just laugh about it Folks, we do have Extra Life coming up. It's going to be November 7th through 8th, noon Saturday to noon Sunday Eastern Time. We're going to be raising money for charity. If you have ideas about what we should do, comment on this here video. And if you want more of our content anywhere you can find it, you can find us at Subpixel Team on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Follow us there to get the latest updates, teases of new projects, as well as promotions of other projects from other creators that we really enjoy. Um, unfortunately, folks, I cannot see this base at the Galactic Center, which means it's time for us to say goodbye. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you guys for being part of this stream. We'll see y'all on Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be playing Jackbox 7. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.